Hey there, I'm your host, Les Sawi, and this is part 14 of our inventory system series. In today's video, we'll do a few fixes, a few updates, and at the very end, we'll create a query inventory function. So with that said, let's begin. All right, so first of all, we are going to fix a bug that's in the inventory system. Whenever you go around and let's say you pick up a few mushrooms, a few items, and there are a few instances of this. So let's say we want to use an item. We lose focus to our inventory. Let's say we want to drop it, split it, inspect it. So in these scenarios, we are going to lose the focus and we can't press I again. So in order to fix that, uh, we'll go to our content drawer. And first of all, let's open up our item prompt. And in here, we'll fix it for the split and the use. And then we'll go over how to do it for the drop and the inspect. So for here, we are going to do a custom event and let's call it focus inventory. And in here, we want to get access to our player display. So in order to do that, I'll get my player controller. Oops. And we will do cast to my player controller. Awesome. And from here, I'm going to get our player HUD. And from this player HUD, we are going to get player display. And in here, we'll have a handy little function we can use, which is called set focus. And we can simply set the focus to our player display. And we can call this function at the end of our at the end of our split and the use. So let's grab our two functions: so event graph, focus inventory. Plug that in here and we'll plug this in here. So with that, we'll compile and save. And now if I go ahead and let's say pick up this cube, I want to use it, press I, boom, I'm back in my inventory. And the same for splitting. If we want to split this mushroom, press I, boom, I'm back. Now this won't work for our, let's say, inventory or in inspect because here we are creating a widget. So if we go back, we need to have focus back on whenever whenever the inspect is destroyed. And same goes with our drop because we're creating another widget. So in order to do that, we'll go to our, first of all, item inspect. And in here, we need to grab ourselves the event destruct. So whenever this is destroyed, we'll set focus back to our um, layers display. So we'll just steal our code, copy that, plug this in here. And this should do it. And uh, we can also do the same thing for our item slider. So whenever we get the destruct event, which we don't have. So let's do this here, event destruct. And at the very end, we can plug this in. And let's go see how this looks like. So compile everything for both of these widgets. And let's test that out. So picked up three mushrooms. I want to go ahead and drop one, maybe press I boom. I'm back in the game and we'll try this out with our inspect. I want to inspect, close it, press I boom. I'm back. So that's fixed. Next, we'll go over a function I forgot to add previously, which is the remove from remove all from inventory. So when you're playing and you want to perhaps drag this out, it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and build that function. We'll go to our content drawer, go to our component, inventory component. And in here, we'll create a new function. And let's call it uh, remove all from inventory. Inside of here, we want to know about the index that we are going to remove. So let's add this in index. Then we want to get a copy of our item slots. So get a copy of this index. And from here, I'm going to break this open, split, and let's promote this to local variables. So we'll call this the local underscore item ID. And we'll do the same for the quantity, local underscore item quantity. And let's plug this in, and we'll also plug this guy in. Next, we'll have a sequence like we did with our previous functions. So on zero, we have the code and on one, we have the update with the sound effects. So let's go ahead and do the update. On zero, I want to get my item slots and we'll do set array element. 
because since we are dropping this, we want to clear this index. So get your index, which is referring this one there. Get index like so. And then split this item and we'll leave it blank because we're dropping everything. And in order to do that, we'll grab our drop from inventory function we made previously and just get your local item ID and your local item quantity and boom. Right, for the updates, we need to have the actual inventory update and the sound effects. So we can go ahead and maybe steal that from our split stack. So grab all of this. That's all we need. And close that and go in here. So we are simply getting the data table for the item sound effect. And then we're updating our inventory. So that should be good. Now let's go ahead and implement this into our UI. So open your inventory slot and in here we want to get our we want to override on drag cancelled event so whenever the drag is cancelled we are going to get our inventory component we'll get our index and from the inventory component we'll do remove all from inventory simply plug that in there index go in, goes in and let's compile and save and see how this looks like I go ahead, pick a few mushrooms up, and I want to drop them. This works, press I, and we're golden. Next, we are going to create a query function for our inventory system. So let's go ahead and do that. Go into your content drawer and open up your inventory component. And a query function is very useful. For example, let's say you had a quest system and you want to compare, do you have this item and do you have a certain amount of items? So in that case, that would be very handy. So go to functions, create a new function, and we'll call this our query inventory. And in here, we of course want to know what item we want to get and perhaps the amount of items. So in here, we'll do input. We'll add our item ID and we will add our item quantity. So item quantity. And this will be a integer. And the first one will be a name. Right, so with that done, we'll get our item slots and we'll do a for each loop because we want to go through all of our items. And then we want to break this open and find does an item match. So we'll get our get item ID. We'll do a equals equals, plug that in there. And if it does, if it does, we'll do a branch. And then we want to get the amount that we had. So how will we do this? We'll, a, we'll get our item quantity and we'll add to this a local found quantity. So let's promote this to a local variable, local underscore found quantity. All right. And then at the very end, we can set this. So if it's true, it did find it. Well, then we'll set this to be that. Okay. And at the very end, once this loop has completed, um, we'll do a return node and we'll simply get a success in here doing it to indicate how we found this item or not. And this will be a boolean. And we'll, um, the value on this will be a local quantity found. And is this greater or equal to than the item quantity? Get item quantity. And this, if this is true, well, then this will return success. And if it's false, well, then it's going to be false. Okay, so that's all we have to do in here. Let's, let's also make this a pure function. And with that, I'll show you where we can implement this. So let's say we had an inventory system and we wanted to check for an item. So we can do this in our true player character, for example. In here, we would do a keyboard two event, or maybe this is in use, so let's do keyboard three. And perhaps we will get this and we'll do get, uh, or not get, we'll do query inventory. And in here, I'll just type this out manually, but of course, if you had a quest system, you would be checking for it there. So the item ID I want to compare, let's say we had the mushroom, which is zero, 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 1b1. One, one. And let's say I want to check do I have three mushrooms. And at the very end, 
we can do a return note or not a return a print string and we'll just print this where whether it was successful or not so let's compile and save that and if we go play and i press three we're getting false because we don't have the mushroom and we don't have three of those items so maybe if i go and collect two and press three i'm still getting false because we need three so oops that's not what i wanted to do but let's collect all three so now i have three and if i press three boom i'm getting true and this could be if i have four still getting true because if it's equals or it's greater all right so this is going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed and if you did leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and as always happy developing